you are about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover hard couple months, but it's this, this, this is enough for you to know what's up in the hood. Understood, understand this plan is put in gear to educate these natives through its peers. The guests are seen, the hosts are teams, produced by teams, so that they be watched by teams. The situations that affect us are the topics we discuss. Hi, my name is Roberto Lopez, and I'm a Mexican man from Mexico City. And today, I'm going to talk to you about the significance of Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos in Espanol. Uh, first of all, Day of the Dead is a very old Mexican tradition that has to do with the blending of two cultures, uh, the Indian culture, Aztec, Maya, and uh, the Spanish uh, tradition. Uh, so for Day of the Dead, which happens to be November 1st and November 2nd, uh, uh, throughout Mexico and many parts of the United States and also in Latin America, many parts of Latin America, we celebrate Day of the Dead. Uh, what we do is we set up you know, little altars at home and in these little altars, we um, include, include pictures of people that, are, that were our relatives, like my cousins, my aunt, my grandpa, um, anybody that was significant to us, um, even friends. So for this uh, particular uh, altar, we got different offerings like like flowers, we get some candy, and we also get something called pan de muerto. This this is bread that we bake specifically for Day of the Dead. As you can see, this is a bread that is already eaten by some by somebody because this is November 10. So November 2nd already happened, and um, so uh, what happens is that uh, on the night of November 2nd. The, the spirits of our relatives and friends will come and will share with us the kind of food that they like, the kind of uh, drinks that they will enjoy. And uh, for that particular night, we let them 
consume the essence of the food and savor the, the, the flavor of the favorite drinks. And then after they finish uh, consuming the essence of the food, then we feast on whatever is left behind. Uh, as you can see, we already ate half of this pan de muerto. Um, and uh, um, like I said to you before, this happens in Mexico uh, specifically because um, this is a festival that many Mexicans cherish and people wait for. Uh, I remember as a child, um, our parents will go and buy little sugar skulls. We call them calaveritas, calaveras. And these uh, skulls would have the name of, um, of relatives and people that we know. Um, and uh, we will include them in the, in the celebration. This, this other altar right here uh, includes many things that had to do with Mexican tradition, like um, loteria. Loteria is like a Mexican bingo. Uh, in this loteria game, uh, they give you a set of cards that are very much like this figures right here. And if you complete the whole set, you, you scream Loteria, it's like bingo. But instead of numbers, we get figures like La Mano, La Bota, La Luna, El Cotorro, La Calavera, La Rosa. So when you fill up the whole thing, you say Loteria. So you win something. But in this particular um, place also, we offer this to, to our relatives, to our friends. And this particular altar uh, was dedicated to a friend that died, uh, Alberto Bonilla. And we dedicate also to saints that we like, like this is the saint of video and television. Saint of video and television. Hmm? Um, and we also get different images of uh, some other things uh, like this person that died recently. Um, we include them here and we also have different candies and uh, see more chocolate here and we got also saints And we got this um, seeds. This means that one day this thing that is dead will come back to life. And the same thing would happen to, to people that died. Someday we will come back and we celebrate for Day of the Dead.
It's like a celebration of the people who passed away in your family, your friends, anyone who's, you know, in all those spirits, whoever's died that you know, or just a dog, anyone, anything that, you know, that's related to you and they celebrate you, either like you do an altar and then you put like food or whatever it was their favorite, either candy or whatever. So it's like a celebration of remembering and because death is a part of life and that's what it is. Well, uh, my mom passed away eight months ago, so I'm remembering my mom, and I bring my son. My son's the one. I'm a mom, and my son comes to the Borg Park. So I mean, death is a part of every day of life. It, you can't, you know, there can't be any life. There's no death. So. This year I had decided to put together a Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos uh, exhibition and celebration. Uh, for me, uh, Day of the Dead signifies uh, memories, um, honoring uh, one's uh, dearly departed ones, um, a family event, oftentimes. Uh, and it's interesting because in my particular family, we are from Mexico, from the northern part, uh, Monterrey, Nuevo León, where there is not a very strong tradition of Day of the Dead. Uh, we had known about it, we've heard about it through family friends over the years. And as I got older, and in particular in the 70s, I began to embrace more of certain traditions within my culture. And one of them was the Day of the Dead. Uh, celebration and altar um, making or the creation of ofrendas. An ofrenda is an altar piece, an altar that commemorates and honors someone who has passed away. Uh, usually it's on November 2nd, 1st and 2nd. November 1st for all the children who have passed away, November 2nd for the adults. It is equivalent in a sense to All Souls Day in uh, Christianity or Catholicism. Uh, Dia de los Muertos is in fact a tradition that goes back before the time of Cortez, uh, before he had conquered uh, Mexico. And the indigenous peoples believe that uh, life and death were inextricably uh, tied together, that it was a cycle, that if you did, if you would if you died that your life would continue in another world in the other realm and there was a lot of ritual associated with this on November 2nd the departed or the dead ones would come back and visit and come back to join you and what one would do one would put out their favorite foods uh, objects that were theirs uh, things to commemorate them with and to welcome them back of course, there were food, there would be toys if it was a child, memorabilia, photographs. It's, uh, let's say you had an uncle who passed away and he loved cigars, you would put a cigar on the altar piece. So it's very much associated with ritual. Unfortunately, um, at the time when the Spaniards were there, and this happened very, very quickly, uh, they prohibited, and what they did was they uh, forced the indigenous peoples of the uh, of the Americas to bow down to Christianity and to do away with these so-called pagan rituals and rites. Uh, Day of the Dead was seen as a pagan ritual. Um, our ancestors, and today we maintain it and keep it alive, and it's interesting to see how through Christianity and 
some of these indigenous, uh, these so-called pagan rites, they were fused together. So today, probably, what you have is a combination, a fusion of two cultures, of Christianity and of uh, native or indigenous rituals pertaining to Day of the Dead. Um, at times, too, we uh, put out the food. We also put out sometimes fresh fruit. There are uh, there is a particular flower that's associated with Dia de los Muertos, which is the Sempanzuchil. It is uh, similar to the marigold, and uh, in other times what, what people might do would be to create a path from the cemetery to the house, a path of flowers, so that the departed ones could come and follow and would know the way back home. Uh, another aspect of this tradition would be that it's customary on the night before on November 1st, going into the 2nd, people would go to the cemetery, clean the cemeteries, wash them, put flowers, light candles, hold vigils, eat food, have something to drink, and share with the neighbors uh, until the very next day where the altars would be uh, set up already or people would be setting them up on, on the actual day. This particular altar, Ofrenda, was created and made uh, as a community uh, ofrenda for anyone who wanted to come in during the exhibition and celebration to participate. Uh, they could come in and bring in um, a photograph of someone, um, an object uh, of a relative or a friend uh, or a particular group of people. Um, in my studio, we had asked various people who uh, were part of the building, who are mainly artists, to uh, create an altar. For many of them, it was their first time. It was a very interesting experience to see uh, their conception or idea behind Dia de los Muertos. Uh, some were for, towards individuals, others were, other ofrendas were uh, for, for the community in general. Um, and uh, this one here is my ofrenda uh, to my mother. It is uh, a nicho or a box uh, which opens up uh, like a triptych and it has her photograph when she was younger and then you'll see uh, very shortly you'll see the photograph when she is much older and again there are uh, rose petals, flowers, uh, she loved flowers plants, uh, the, the candle holders, um, a little bell. Uh, the box sort of represented, uh, I like the idea of the nicho, the idea that you can open it up like a little nicho and altar and uh, pay homage and respect to her memory uh, and honor her. This is an embroidery. This is, uh, she was a terrific embroiderer, uh, did a lot of needlepoint. Uh, her wooden spoons that she used for cooking, for nourishing, nourishment. Um, some little skulls that I had painted in, and two little um, little angels or, or puti, which are just the little angel's head with the wings spread out. Um, and as we'll see uh, in a little while, there is a table um, below it, which is part of the altarpiece, but that table there uh, contains the photograph of my grandmother, my aunt, uh, that passed away uh, many years ago. And uh, the title of my piece is, in Spanish, it is called Bendito Seas Entre Las Mujeres, which means blessed are you amongst women. Um, the little table in the arrangement, a view that's coming from, uh, from above, uh, it's quite beautiful and uh, it's full of serenity. And these two um, images, this, this powerful image of these two women, my grandmother and my aunt. Uh, and you can see the, the small three-pronged candelabra made out of uh, clay, out of barro. It's from Oaxaca. Even though we were mainly from the northern part, uh, we are very much uh, involved or close to people in other states of Mexico, especially myself as I got older and traveled um, uh, throughout Mexico. and. Uh, grow to really love uh, my country and where I come from and not just the particular region that I'm from. 
I think of the Day of the Dead as a time of healing for pain and uh, for loss in your life. And so I chose the image of the old movie star Joan Crawford because even though in all of her old movies she really came across as someone really together and very cool and smooth, she actually came from a childhood that was filled with lots of violence and lots of abuse and pain and things like that. I mean, like when they were making movies and she had to cry in a scene, she would think about her childhood and she would cry for so long that everybody would have to go to lunch and she'd still be crying. So um, by using her image, I try to um, bring forth an idea of a person that is hurting very much but can still be healed, because that's what Day of the Dead is all about. But the significance of uh, Day of the Dead, let's say, um, uh, with Halloween. Uh, Halloween, uh, I understand that uh, people will dress themselves in, um, in a scary way to scare off the spirits that will come to visit that night. So you will put something on that will scare those spirits away. And then as you go from one place to the other, you have fun. And, um, and for our Day of the Dead is, is, the, is uh, different. Instead of um, waiting for somebody to either scare you off or for you to scare them away, you know? So that is uh, the basic difference of Day of the Dead. Indian traditions, they look at uh, themselves as uh, two entities. Those ones that, that were alive and those ones that were dead. And in their festivities, they will make one day or two to invite those people that died before to come and celebrate. This was mostly um, an Indian tradition. When the Spanish came to Mexico, uh, they brought in the Catholicism. They got the idea that, you know, one day uh, on final judgment, everybody will resurrect and you will either be cast into damnation or you will be, you know, saved. But in the meanwhile, in our Indian tradition, we celebrate our yearly events. We invite those people that died and we celebrate with them, whether or not they are in heaven or in hell. Who knows and who cares? Which one do you want? 